Hello and welcome to episode 63 of Dorky's Entropia Universe Report. I think this might turn out to be a shorter episode, because not much happened in Entropia for me. But before we get into the Entropia Universe stuff proper, let me say a few words about the weather. It has been effing hot this last week. It still is hot as poop right now. So my brain cells have disappeared somewhere, probably off to a vacation in the freezer. At the same time, the rest of the body has been emulating a sloth. And another thing that was doing its best to emulate a dead sloth was my loot in Entropia Universe. That was the main reason that I did not do all that much in game, although I did do some mining runs as well as several hunts. I already complained about the mining on Cyrene in the last episode. Lovely planet with some nice mobs and some really nice places for mining, except for the TT returns being always atrocious. Well, I had similar experience with mining on Arcadia lately. For whatever reason, I kept getting mostly bad returns there. But unlike Cyrene, I know that Arcadia is usually quite nice for mining. There are some places with rather decent markup too. But this time around, I just kept getting TT trash most places and the return was abysmal. However, when I came to Calypso and did couple mining runs there, the results were good. I ended up with one small profit and one near break even, but I was a bit too depressed and in no mood for any more mining at that point. So I just decided to take a break from mining for a while. It remains to be seen how long this break will last. I will be crafting my explosive projectiles one blueprint, maybe sweat a little or do some 100 bed hunts on small stuff with the TT guns. I did fairly alright on the social workers at that famous parking lot on Rocktropia. The two hunts I did there gave me decent returns. I had to turn off the sound again, listening to hookers yell at me how they never seen me in the Hall of Fame, while my gun blasted its darn continuous techno tune of whatever sound that Rocktropian TT pistol makes, got real annoying real fast. It was kind of funny for a little bit. The gun blasting away did really sound like some weird, uninspired, repetitive track some people like to listen to. It had me giggling like a retard for the first 10 minutes or so. Then I just lost my will to live, turned off the speakers and went listen to some music on my phone instead. It is good that Entropia Universe is one of those games that you can easily play without the in-game sound turned on. That makes the game far more enjoyable over long hours of grinding than it otherwise would have been. I usually just listen to music or watch YouTube videos while mining or hunting. It makes the time go by faster, which is very important considering how slow the progress is in Entropia. After a few stages, each hunting mission takes thousands of mobs to complete, sometimes even tens of thousands, cycling through bed in mining and getting enough valuable resources for sale and occasional crafts takes even longer than that, especially without amps. It can be a lot faster with amps, but you know, amps cost markup and require a lot larger budget to use without the constant risk of going broke before anything good drops to compensate for the TT losses that accrue much faster than in unamped mining. I know this might sound like I am complaining, but the grindiness of the game is probably one of the main reasons I am still playing Entropia Universe more than 16 years after I created my avatar. There are always new things I still want to achieve and do, and that I will feel good about once I do achieve them. The gameplay can be boring at times, 
but overall I am having fun far more often than not. Entropia is rather similar to Stellaris in this. That game can sometimes get rather tedious and grindy, especially in the mid to late game. Yet I still enjoy my time with it. Anyway, back to Entropia. I still have not reached at least one of my goals from many years ago. Although, to be honest, I kind of revised my resolution to achieve it. I am talking about the goal to reach level 100 and be able to use the old school weapons to their full potential. While I would still like to eventually get to that point, I do not really see all that much of an advantage to that as I did back in the old days though. Limited weapons are fairly cheap nowadays compared to back then and so are many of the unlimited SIB weapons. Obviously, many of those did not necessarily exist 10 or more years ago. But it is fairly easy to find a decent weapon at fairly reasonable prices ranging from the low level ones up to roughly level 40 or 50 weapons. I am talking about the levels at which they are maxed out. And of course by reasonable prices I also mean compared to what the same or in some cases vaguely similar options used to cost in the past. Combine that with how I changed my playstyle over the last few years and I do not actually have any solid reason for trying for level 100 in any profession besides the looter professions. Getting closer to those levels is just a byproduct of my quest to reach ever higher total skill count and I stopped actively pursuing that sort of a level a while ago. When it comes to the old school weapons, it is far more sensible from both the financial and the practical standpoint to just save up a little bit of extra cash and buy an unlimited SIB weapon or use limited equipment. And I am starting to get a bit too off topic for this video now. So let's get back to what I was actually doing over the week and what I managed to achieve. First off, I will mention something that I actually achieved over a week ago and that is hitting the 236 hit points. I think I forgot to mention it in the last week's episode. If I did mention it, then sorry that I repeated myself. Anyway, one thing that I did achieve this week was that I passed 353k total skills. I do not expect to reach 354k for a few weeks now, but who knows, maybe I will take a break from crafting at some point and go chop down some trees again or finish some mission and take a skill I do not have much points in as a reward. But most likely I will just keep on crafting and the maximum I will do besides that will be some sweating or a short roleplay as Jack the Ripper at that Rocktropian parking lot full of vixens and people trying to complete the AI daily mission. Maybe I will do some pesky Rocktropian crabs too, but if I do it will be with my combustive attack Nano Cheap 6 and my pyrokinetic skills are already slow to skill up. So that will not help me much in reaching the next total skill milestone. By the way, I dumped most of my money into Crystal Palace shares after my poopy returns in mining. I was still way too tempted to go out and do some expensive stuff. So I invested my pads into the shares instead of trying to push through the bad loot times. I have been saying to people that it is almost always a bad idea to push through crap loot. So this time around I actually took my own advice and made sure I will not be able to keep it up even if I wanted to. I do not plan to deposit anything for the rest of the year and since I only left myself with about 300 bed, 
for the crafting. I will not be doing anything stupid for at least the next month or so, I hope. It is enough for the small stuff and I should be able to make some extra bed doing just that over the week and hopefully keep on making profit for the months to come. Anyway, I now own 136 Crystal Palace shares. That should net me 1 to 3 ped in dividends most weeks. It is not that much, but those shares should more or less keep their value. So I consider it a good way to store my in-game funds with very little risk of losing much if any of it and possibility that I will actually make a profit off of it. Meanwhile, if I actually kept that money on my pet card, it would not earn me any dividends and have no potential to increase in value at all. It would also tempt me to go out and do way more hunting and mining than I should be doing. When I only do a bit of hunting or mining every once in a while, I tend to do rather well. It is when I start grinding a lot that Luteus notices me and spreads my cheeks wide open. Anyway, there goes the idea of this being a shorter episode. I sure as poop did not expect to keep going on and on about semi-random stuff today, despite the fact that that is exactly how most of these episodes tend to turn out lately. Anyway, let's go over the investment returns before I wrap up the episode in another 20,000 words or thereabouts. And before some perceptive person in the comments points out that my videos are not all that long compared to what some other channels are putting out, sometimes on a daily basis, let me say this. I am indeed joking. My videos are not that long, but they have been slowly getting longer and longer to a point that I am now yapping on about stuff I never thought I would talk about when I started writing the script. I guess that might be a good thing. After all, I do tend to enjoy longer videos too, and if I enjoy these sorts of videos where people just talk about stuff, then there are bound to be other people out there who enjoy such videos too. And maybe some of them will happen to enjoy the videos I put out. Anyway, let's get to those deed and share payouts now. Shit, I hope I will have enough gameplay footage to cover this video. I was being smart and deleted all videos where nothing interesting happened once again. I will start with the Arcadian Deeds. Arcadia Moon Deeds are still underperforming, but they did pay out twice over the week from Monday 3rd of August to Monday 10th of August 2020. Both payouts were for one pack per deed. They still have not sold out in the webshop. Meanwhile, Arcadia Underground Deeds paid out four times over the week. Each of the four payouts was for one pack per deed. While neither of the Arcadian deeds did particularly well this week, I would say the payout was alright for the AUDs and better than the usual one payout for the AMDs. So I am somewhat happy with them. Now let's get into the shares and their payouts. When I went check in on the Ancient Greece share payout, there was that good old Zero staring right back at me. Of course they did not pay anything at all again. What was I expecting? Anyway, it looks like the number of available Ancient Greece shares will dip under the 660k someday soon. The number of available shares was just 69 shares higher than that this morning when I took the footage for this episode. Maybe they will finish selling the first 100k by the end of this year. Either way, Crystal Palace shares did well this week. 
they paid out 3 peg per share. So my 136 Crystal Palace shares gave me a total of 4 ped and 8 peg. If I remember correctly, I had like 23 CP shares at the time I was working on last week's episode. And to be honest, I think I did the right thing when I bought up those shares instead of wasting that money hunting on or mining. Anyway, I do hope to get that number up to at least 200 by the end of 2020. Also, the cheapest stack of Crystal Palace shares available for purchase this morning was priced at 19 ped and 67 pack. And there was an unusually high number of CP shares available on the market because someone apparently decided to drop a stack of 20,000 of them at 22 ped per share. I guess whoever it was is a bit too much of an optimist. But who knows? Maybe someone else comes along, buys up all the cheaper shares and some of those overpriced ones will sell too. I do not think that will happen though. To conclude, this week was rather good when it comes to CP share payouts and my avatar progress. Somewhat mediocre in regards to AUD and AMD payouts and worse than the worst hangover in terms of the ancient Greece share payouts and sales. I increased my total skill to 353k and also grew my collection of Crystal Palace shares by more than a hundred. But my pet card is almost empty and will stay that way until I manage to make some decent profits from crafting and small time hunting. By the way, I hope I did not bore you to death with this episode. It turned out to be far longer than I anticipated when I started writing the script. So thank you for watching and I hope you will have a pleasant remainder of the day. Please consider leaving a like, sharing any of your Entropia Universe related thoughts in the comments below and subscribing to the channel. All of those things really help keep me motivated to keep making more videos. Thank you.